All right, so today uh, on this episode two, long-awaited episode two of uh, you know what they say with Soul and Farmar. Um, after going over a few topics, I think we've decided we want to talk about vanilla because that's what everybody's excited about. That's what I'm excited about. Soul, are you excited for vanilla? I haven't played it yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I will tell you when I get access to the beta. But uh, so I, I don't know. I've been one of those people who, and this is definitely you know something that happened in the last episode. Is I talked about how I think that there's a lot of things about about vanilla that people don't remember suck, and. I think that I underestimated people's willingness to overlook that stuff. Like, um, watching the streamers and stuff, and then, it's like, not just the streamers themselves, but just everyone involved with Vanilla seems to be having a blast, which is super cool, and I'm glad that everyone is enjoying it. So I, I think I, I overestimated people's typical, like, lack of, like, the ability to put up with tedious crap, but I guess for vanilla, it's some. Just I honestly agree with you. Like I agree. <laughs> like I'm actually surprised how like how shrugged off some of the tedious stuff is. Yeah, like I'm happy that it's go doing well because if if this does well, um, you know maybe we'll see other legacy servers come out, and there I I would love to see like a wrath server or. Uh, a BC server because I never got to experience BC like as like a, a a regular player. I I would started with Wrath, so like I would love to be able to have my nostalgia trip that all the people who played in vanilla are getting right now. Yeah, dude, a Wrath server would be legit. But I awesome. I agree. I think TBC would actually be a little bit better just because I didn't get the experience like I didn't get the experience in game vanilla or in game TBC just because my lack of will I mean, to was... actually level <laughs> yeah. up was <laughs> um oh by the way uh your mic gain might be a little bit too loud it's it's hitting it's starting to buzz I can just move the mic farther from my face okay is that better uh yeah it was just a little bit cool and um, I, just, I, but, I have it on a boom stand, so I have to move it around. Oh, it buzzed again. As soon as you said boom, you got all excited or something. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so, yeah, I am actually surprised how much of the tedious stuff that has just been kind of shrugged off. Like, um, like, I was predicting that people were going to hate having to use mats for abilities and stuff. But uh, it seems that, uh, and maybe this is just from a streamer's perspective, that mats and uh, and level grinding is just a non-issue, and it's probably because they can spend their whole day, you know, doing it. Right. We're seeing the really drastic end right now of vanilla. Um, obviously, only up to level thirty, but we're seeing the really drastic side of vanilla. With people that can literally just no life it because that is their life right. now, right? Back in the day, if you were no lifing vanilla, you were actually no lifing it. Um, now you you make a living off of it, so um, perhaps that has something to do with it. They just have you know enough time to put into this, right? Like as much as much um, effort that they're putting in at level thirty is, you know, it's definitely uh, interesting to see because. A lot of them have maxed like their engineering and stuff because that's clearly the best PvP um, profession with all the grenades and versatility mm -hmm. with the uh, the speed boosts and things like that. Um, but they they're already maxed. Like they're already 225, right? 300 is the max like at 60, but 225 is the highest you can get at level 30. And nobody's gonna have 225 at engineering at level 30. I mean. I imagine. Right, well, because they've hit level cap already, they're now trying to find things to do, which makes sense. Right, right, yeah. Because I'm... a lot of the end game content isn't there yet, so they're running No More Gone over and over again for gear, and they're leveling professions, which no one ever does until they hit max level. Right, and, and yeah, exactly. Um, 
it's just, I guess, you know, 30 is being the max levels probably got something to do with that as well. Sure. Um, so, I've been super surprised. I've been following Asmongold a lot um, and watching his streams, and they've done some ridiculous stuff. Uh, I don't know if you've watched his stream in the last few days, but uh, they went ahead and did... Uh, so back in vanilla, um, world bosses didn't have a leash range, so you could literally kite them forever. Like, yep. one of the most infamous videos ever is Doom Lord Kazak raiding Ironforge. Um, yep, I've seen the video. Yeah, so they actually brought... Uh, what's the dragon's name? Timaeus or something like that? Over from... Uh, Blasted sure. Lands, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, over to uh, Stormwind, and it was wreaking havoc. Um, so I'm curious to see the direction that the devs take with that sort of behavior, right? Because that did exist in Classic, but back then, if you did that, right, I'm, I'm pretty sure from the things that I've heard, one, the only way that they could remedy it was to actually restart Reset the entire the server. server. Yeah, uh-huh. And I'm pretty sure they took actions on the person's account that actually did that. No, so, it wasn't against the rules. They would just have to reset the server. Really? It wasn't against the rules? No. Mm -mm. Wow. So that's going to be... That's going to be interesting. Because you know that's going to exist way more. Like I said in yeah, our last episode, like way back when, some of the things people are going to be doing in vanilla are going to be strictly for the memes, right? Like oh, social obviously. media is way more of a thing now. I mean, the three of us have been talking to you, me, and uh, one of our coworkers who plays the game have been talking about rolling triple rogue just to meme people because <laughs> that's hilarious. Triple rogue, triple mage, triple palm pyro. Yeah, no, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a cluster because the game just it it enables you for so many things that have been taken away and some have been taken away for the better some for the worse i personally wouldn't mind having a world boss destroying stormwind every now and then i am <laughs> horrid but you know <laughs> it would be hilarious if there was a world boss running around orc just killing stuff exactly right and and that that stuff's been kind of nerfed and taken away um, One of the first memories I have like that of WoW is the Cataclysm pre-release events where like Deathwing was actually showing up in major cities and just oh like attacking God. and people yeah. were just getting destroyed by him. It was excellent. Yeah, I remember so, that. That kind of thing can exist even in like, I mean, obviously that was years ago, but even in like live and still be fun. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, you got an achievement for it too. Like, if Deathwing yeah. killed you, you got an achievement for it. I think it was a feat of strength. Mm -hmm. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> um, shit. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, what's it called? Uh, another thing that, that the streamers have been doing... Oh my god, dude, the streamers have been getting so much hate. We'll talk about that later, but... Another thing they've been doing is in the Battlegrounds. Um, there's no timer. Like, Wars on Gulch, there's no timer. So, oh, so they'll just get the flag and camp. Exactly. They just camp the <laughs> graveyards, dude. Oh, that's excellent. There's that's no so limits, cute. no rules. It's whatever goes. And people are furious, man. People are so upset about it. Um, they've been, like, creating streams. They're like, can we have uh, non-streamer non servers and things like that? So here's the thing. I think that the game is getting an excellent showing because there's a bunch of streamers playing it right now. But I think that uh, there's a lot of people who aren't going to be able to know life it as much as a streamer, and they're going to lose steam faster than the streamers are. I also think that... I think that once people... Once vanilla isn't the new hotness anymore, like, you know, it, because it's it's brand new, people have been asking forever, there's a lot of hype around it. And I think that when that calms down a little bit, we're definitely going to have a lot of people drop off of vanilla. Um, I Like I said, I, I hope it does well in the long term, and I'm really excited that people are enjoying it so much. But I think that we have to keep in mind the hype train effect, because, you know, <laughs> we could definitely have... A case where like 
like like Anthem, right? Anthem was hyped up a lot before it released. I mean, and Anthem was honestly it... was inflated popularity, though. Right? Sure, but I, I, it could it, we could see the same effect with 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 uh, vanilla because it's being inflated by all of the streamers messing around on it, right? And um, I think that we could. I'm not. I'm not saying it's going to be in, like Anthem. I'm not trying to say that. Like obviously, it's not the same thing, but. Um, the same kind of effect where we have lots of people who start the game and then, you know, a month later, nobody's playing it. Right. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, not, not that fast, at least. I think that it's going to... I mean, honestly, if 8.2 doesn't really give us anything, I imagine vanilla is going to be the thing until the next expansion. That's my prediction. Uh, the 8.2 raid seems pretty cool. There's a new zone. We'll talk about 8.2 some other day. Yeah. But there's a lot of content coming in 8.2. Sure, sure. But but yeah, if it know, doesn't satisfy... I mean, years and years of hype have been built up around vanilla. Sure, absolutely. You know? Like, it's... When vanilla was released, there was... It, it sold out, like, what, the same day? Back in 2004 or whatever? Yep. And uh and I imagine it's going to have a very similar influx if not even more players. Um apparently um some of the top name streamers of other games have been getting vanilla as well, such as There was one Pokémon, she got it. Uh, yeah. There was a rumor that Ninja had got it. Uh, apparently, I think he posted something on Twitter, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. I don't follow him on Twitter, but I heard something about that. Could you imagine bringing all of the Fortnite players in? Well, I mean, there are big name streamers that play WoW as well as other games. Yes, so but that's already an not... audience that's there, right? Well, no, 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 not necessarily. So, like, so, like, uh. Like, for example, there's Shroud, right? Shroud doesn't really play WoW that often. He plays WoW when a new expansion comes out, and he normally doesn't stream it. He'd streamed it for BFA, because he's just like, whatever, I just want to have fun. And, like, did so, but he doesn't actually play WoW, right? Like, he's very obviously mainly an FPS player. But he got into the beta. So, hmm. like, he's bringing an audience that maybe knows about WoW, but doesn't really play it. Then there's people like Quinn who just like switch games all the time. So like he played WoW for a while. He came from Diablo. Quinn's everywhere, dude. Yeah, but I've, it's I mostly... think I've literally seen him play almost every game. Like every single yeah. game that I've been interested in, like Quinn is always in the top ten. Yeah, but like he has a loyal group of people who follow him, right? So right. like him coming back to WoW now that Vanilla's out, like he could bring a huge like yeah, the streamers can bring a huge amount of people in. How many of them are going to stick around is the question. We ha we don't know yet. Sure. Sure. I mean, I think it's going to hold the attention of a lot of uh, big-name streamers for a good while. Because, I mean... Okay, maybe... Okay, all right. There is a vast difference in the types of people that enjoy an MMORPG versus, you know, a Battle Royale. But... Sure. I think, I think nowadays, these games are so clashed. Like, think of the ways that wow has been streamlined right it's been streamlined heavily ever since you know mobas have come around and battle royales have come around um there's not really a battle royale kind of mode in world of warcraft right now but there's a lot of things that like mobas have shaped in world of warcraft such as like the 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 q system and and lfr and things like that Honestly, I think it's shaped it for the worse. Um, well, but... I don't. I don't actually think that those are necessarily a direct influence of MOBAs. Like, like uh, LFR Dude, started it... with Cataclysm, and there wasn't really a popular MOBA out at the time. Like Dota One existed, but it it wasn't like anywhere near the level of League of Legends, Dota Two, or even Han after it. Okay, sure. Maybe okay. Maybe MOBA is the wrong term. I'm talking about. Um, even even FPS shooters, right? Just being able to log onto the game and instantly join, right? Okay. Instantly yeah, that's jump fair. into a game, right? That has shaped, you know, uh, WoW in a way that, in my opinion, is for the worse. 
because it makes the game feel smaller and it feels short-handed, right? Um, and you feel less to, like attached to your character. So, going back to my point with vanilla, I think that there's a sheer difference in the 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 mindset that it takes to play these games. And if you go back to vanilla and you're playing and you're used to being able to just jump into a game immediately, right? But now you're 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 kind of I want to say the word forced. I want to say you're forced to immerse and actually spend time with your character, right? In in classic. And I think that that is going to revive a lot of people um, into the MMORPG genre. Seeing, you think so? yeah, I think that I think that sort of attachment that you experience your first time ever playing an MMORPG, I think that has been completely negated over the last few years of MMORPGs. And I think bringing vanilla back is going to reignite that that sort of feeling in people, that, especially the people that have never played before. I think, I think that's going to be huge. Kind See, of. I think I think that we could actually have an opposite effect. I think that because games are so much more streamlined now, um, the rigor is required to actually make decent progress through the world of WoW is going to turn off a lot of people who might five or six years ago been like yeah i'll try this i could see that argument i guess so like, i guess it could I, go I, both ways but i yeah, do think it, there's just, gonna be we don't know yet i i do think that classic is going to ignite a paradigm shift when it comes to the way people look at mmorpgs and like, not just funneling us through you know a 3d interactive phone game right yeah. I, th I think i think it is gonna shape it for the better um although Going back to what you're saying, there is the the negative side of it. And um, do you follow Preach at all? I love Preach. Preach, Dude, Preach is one of my top two WoW content creators. Dude, Preach, Brofist, my friend. Anyways, he brought up this really pessimistic view <laughs> in his latest video about Vanilla, talking about how um, bringing back Classic is going to ignite enough of a um, following right, with the hardcore MMORPG gamers, that they're going to stay in vanilla, basically in that cage, and retail can go wild and become, you know, a microtransaction, like, paradise land that that is all for the executives to make their, their margins, right? I really, really hope that does not come to fruition. I also hope that that is... Uh preach being fatalistic because uh that would make me really sad i i appreciate the i appreciate vanilla wow for what it is i appreciate that it's hardcore and people who are looking for hardcore stuff can go there and have this excellent time but i am the kind of person who both enjoys hardcore play that's why i do mythic rating but also really enjoys the quality of life additions that have been added over the last 15 years of wow so if they do do that and then they just turn, you know, vanilla into the, the hardcore gamers paradise or whatever you want to call it, and they make uh, retail like a microtransaction infested slump, I'm going to be pretty sad. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, honestly, like it's not impossible, but I just really hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> Right, and that's that's another thing, right? Is it's going to satisfy a lot of hardcore gamers that are going to play vanilla, but at the end of the day, right? Vanilla is stationary; like it's not going anywhere. It's not changing, right? I doubt they're going to add new content to it that that wasn't already there back in the day. So, when people do beat, you know, quotations beat vanilla, you know, they're going to want to. I, I would say most people are going to want to go to their other characters. Vanilla is there when you want to experience it after you've beaten it already, right? But people are one going to go to their, their actual characters. And if they do that, I think that's going to, yeah, I, I think that's going to really put a nail in the coffin in terms of the wow is dying. Mentality. I think part of what you just said is actually what I think is most interesting to me about vanilla. Because vanilla is included for free as part of your regular subscription... I think we'll see a lot of people who will just pick which one they want to play for the day 
based on their mood. They'll be like, you know what? I feel like going and doing a Mythic 10 with my buddies right now. You know what? I feel like running No Morgan because I want to take things a little slower. I think that having both of them available for the exact same subscription is going to be extremely beneficial to the longevity of actually both of them. I think like, there's definitely a positive way that they can really evaluate the two games and the two styles and bring things that people enjoy from um, vanilla to retail, right? To to increase the player base and the people interested. Um, but I, I definitely think that... I think overall... Um, Honestly, right now it's too early to tell, right? It's just beta. If you had, to, I, if you just had to, uh, off your gut though, say that you think vanilla will be bigger than retail. Do you think vanilla will end up being a bigger thing than retail? Um, obviously we don't know for a fact. I'm not gonna hold you to your your guess. I'm just curious. Do you think that's how it's gonna end up? For 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 a year. Yeah. If 8.2 and 8.3 don't offer anything, yes. I think Vanilla is going to basically carry WoW on a crutch. <laughs> um, okay. But if 8.2 and 8.3 has some decent changes, then I, I, I'm, I'm expecting it to be more of a 50-50. Okay. I would say that I agree with that last statement, absolutely. I think... So some of the guys in my chat were saying they think that Vanilla is not going to be as big as you're making it out to be. Um, and I think that uh, I don't agree with them. I think that um, your stance here is actually correct. That if 8.2 and, and 8.3 don't really deliver, then I absolutely think vanilla is going to be what keeps WoW from dying. Um, however, I think in the long term, they're going to lose people's interest quickly with vanilla. I think that vanilla is really cool. Um as a like one-time kind of play experience right leveling is such a huge portion of it that i think that once once the majority of people have leveled a character to max or maybe two they are not going to want to do it again yeah and and honestly i mean that's part of the fun thing about vanilla that's another thing i like another aspect i like about vanilla is the fact that it doesn't lend itself to alts I mean, I play one character, so you know, it sure. doesn't really affect me, and thus I like I like being known as I'm the feral druid, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and other people have their identities based around the classes and specs that they play, and I think that um, that was one of my favorite things about Legion was the artifacts really, you know, pushed that. Um, I know a lot of people dislike that, um, but in vanilla especially, right? You can't respec every day. Like you'll you'll run out oh, of gold so yeah, fast. You'll run out of gold um, so fast. So the fact that people have their identities wrapped in in these single characters, I think, is is part of the thing that I like. But to your point, right? Because there is a negative side to it, and it's the fact that you might you you might hit a point with your character where you're like, there's nothing else for me to do, and then you check out, right? And that 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 might be how it how it is. Um, I think if they do the staging right, then vanilla could live for a little while. Um, like they said, they're gonna do what six, seven stages. Six. Um, yeah, that I imagine is gonna have a good time period in between, so it feels like content release, right? Um, and I think because of that, it's going to elongate the amount of interest that is in vanilla. I think it's good that they're not releasing it all at once, and so, people will be okay, done with so it in a month. Two right? questions. One is a really good one from someone in my chat. Shadow was asking, "What do you think Classic is a test to see if they're going to hit a reset button and try to build WoW 2 based on the principles of WoW, like vanilla WoW? Do I think they're going to roll out a WoW 2? Do you, do you um, think that WoW, vanilla WoW is like a, a testing ground for how they want to do WoW 2 if they ever do it? So that's the perspective I want to view it as, right? Okay. I want to believe that they are going to learn from vanilla and find out the things people like and put that into the retail game, right? 
I really want to believe that. Um, but then there's also the, the, the aspect that Preach spoke about, and, and that's maybe it's just a playground for the hardcore players, and retail is about to get casualized even further. Okay. I want it to be the, 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 the former, right? Like, I do not want the latter scenario whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, did that answer your question? Yeah, that's a good, it was a good answer. Um, and then the question that I have is, do you think that they should do what OSRS does? So, uh, for those of you that don't play Old School RuneScape or don't really follow it at all, what Old School RuneScape did when it was brought back due to you know community demand was they started doing polls, basically. And they would ask people, hey, do you think we should implement this feature? So they, they rolled back to basically their equivalent of Vanilla WoW, Vanilla RuneScape, if you will. And then they started doing polls, and they had to get, like, I think it was, like, 70% 70, 70 of the population of the play, active player base to vote yes to implement a change. Okay, so one of the first things that they did is, yes, that is currently how it works, but one of the first things they did when they were talking about bringing OSRS back was they had a huge poll, right? Everybody in the community, not just OSRS players, but everybody in the community, when they were deciding that they were going to bring OSRS back, man, that's a tongue twister, um, <laughs> they held a poll, and there was three options, right? Depending on the amount of feedback they got back. And one was, are they going to dedicate a majority, which means they were going to pull devs off of OSR, or... Uh, rs3 to um work on brand new features full time for osrs and they had the second option which was like they were going to pull you know a little bit of dev work right and then the third one they were just going to completely maintain it in its static form right um that's pretty huge and i think when it comes to vanilla i don't want them to alter the way the game works but i would not mind it if they fix some bugs Personally. Okay, so, but the question is, like, how do you keep everyone happy in that situation, right? Like, you'll have people like you who don't want them to change anything, but they want them to fix bugs. There are people who think that the bugs are part of the charm of vanilla. There are people like me who think that vanilla WoW is an excellent foundation and they can actually build a lot of really cool new content out of it. So, how do they keep everyone happy in a world like that where there's lots of different opinions? that are all valid, but all obviously entirely, like, you know, juxtaposing with each other. All right, easy. So what they do is they have retail, they have WoW Vanilla, and then they've got WoW Vanilla Deluxe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, honestly, I mean, you can't make everybody happy in this situation. I think maintaining the integrity of Vanilla and altering retail in, in positive light of Vanilla is probably the best middle ground you can reach, right? Nobody has expectations of retail maintaining retail status, right? It's it, it, it's ever-changing. That's the nature of it. That's what a lot of people have issues with currently is, you know... They it, make changes just for the sake of making changes. Yeah. It, I, yeah. I mean, cough, cough, Azurite pieces. <laughs> um, exactly. And so I think that maintaining the integrity of vanilla while, you know, um, altering retail in, in in light of vanilla is probably their best bet in terms of keeping everybody happy. I just hope that executive decisions are made in, in terms of um, the community and, and their possibility of, of having a lot of players rather than what we've seen recently where they they do things to um basically uh what's the word inflate. to encourage people to resub yeah inflating subs right like oh six months sub here's a boat you know <laughs> like I'm, I'm hoping we lean further away from that and i'm hoping they realize with vanilla that sort of that sort of mentality that the gamers have But anyways, we're reaching end of time here. I do want to okay. open it up for questions. So if your chat has questions or my chat has questions, now is the time to ask. Um, 
Foss made a comment, and I agree with him. Um, in terms of changing vanilla, I wouldn't mind if they fixed the bugs and then updated the graphics to what they're currently. I personally, I, I don't have a problem if they're going to change the graphics, right? I think the new graphics are great. I mean, they're not amazing, but they're great. And I think that was a good change. I like the good. I like the new graphics too. So I think bug fixes and graphic changes are something that shouldn't be held, um, you know. Ransom. Uh, not ransom, but sink. Uh, what's the word? You know, <laughs> religious or whatever. <laughs> oh, held sacred. Sacred. That's the word. Thank you. Um, I don't know, man. Like, like for example, there's already like they there was people making videos of glitching under Stormwind. There was people glitching through Stratholm to get underneath it. Like, those kind of bugs are what, in a lot of people's mind, make vanilla. So I think that like, you kind of you can't ignore the 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 sanctity, the sacredness of those bugs, because to some people that is the game and. There are people who enjoy that kind of thing. I mean, shit. I, I love levitate bugging, you know, levitate uh, glitching all the way to the top of Ironforge back in the day. I literally leveled a priest to, I think, like 26 or something, whatever levitate level is, just to get to the top of Ironforge. I, I leveled a mage to 20 for polymorph just to glitch through the wall in Ironforge and get to old Ironforge. Like... I completely agree, you know, that those are important aspects of vanilla, but I don't think that they are, I don't know, I don't, I don't think they're the, the things that need to be held sacred, right? Hmm. Like, the class design, the, 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 the fighting, the combat mechanics, the, um, the UI, the... Uh, the way you find groups, things like that, that's all sacred, right? But in terms of graphics and bugs, I don't think those are as highly important to me, at least. And I don't speak for everybody. I don't even speak for a majority of people. But that's my perspective on on that. All right, you guys heard it here. Faramar speaks for every feral druid ever. The, yeah, which is like two people in the world, so... so. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like the changes. Go yell at Faramar. <laughs> but, all right. Any last questions from your chat? Uh, nope. Nothing in particular. All right, boys. Well, you heard it here first. What they say. <laughs> uh, episode two with uh with my friend Soul, and um, yeah. Thanks for I joining me, Soul. I think we're planning on doing this again next week, right? Yes, this is... We're planning on this being a weekly thing. Um, I was just definitely sick and could not, you know, breathe a breath without coughing up a lung. So we've we've really delayed this, but we're, we're planning on this being a weekly thing, so... Alright, well, I, uh, I will see you next week then for... Next episode of You Know What They Say. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Soul. Have a good one, guys.